It's summer in Britain, and as the world hits pause with a viral pandemic, nature continues, and in some cases, is allowed to breathe again. However, for Vale Wildlife Hospital in the middle of England, so far it's been one of their busiest years since they opened their doors over 36 years ago. I'm Paul Ramos, a wildlife vet who volunteers at the hospital. This is a week in the life of people working together to help Britain's wild animals. Hello, Vale Wildlife Hospital. In this last month, Vale have had a record number of animals come through their doors, and Britain's garden hero, the hedgehog, has been particularly hard hit. Just minding their own business, and some dog came along and had a big go at them. So we're going to try to give them the best chance that they can. Hedgehogs are really fun animals to work with, but they can be really challenging. They've got this special muscle that goes around them so that when it contracts like a purse string, it exposes over 5,000 spines to any potential attacker. Even though they're so small, it's still a two-person job. And vet nurse Lydia brings a lot of experience. It's difficult to treat any wild animal, but hedgehogs in particular because they do have lots of spines so it does make things quite difficult. I'm really concerned about these two little babies that came in. Something's not quite right. They should be much more reactive to us. They should be curling up into these tight balls that you just can't undo but they're just a little bit listless. We need to find out what's wrong. The first thing you want to do is take the pain away. That's the first thing. Um, and then you want to get them warm. You want to stabilize them and you want to basically assess the injuries. While there are some wounds to them, these dog bite wounds, the problem is that you can have this sort of tip of the iceberg effect where what you see is just a small part of the real problem. They've only lived for a few weeks or a few months and that's their sort of first start to life, that's their, one of the early experiences and they're now having to go through all of that at such a young age. And yeah, so it's quite, it's quite upsetting and it's, it is something, unfortunately, we do see quite regularly. Unfortunately for these two baby hedgehogs, their severe injuries were not compatible with life. But the Vale's philosophy to give animals a chance has led to the final chapter for these young owls. Vale relies on its volunteers, and tonight, Billy is helping to bring them home. So the end goal is to release it back into the wild in a better state than when it arrived, and so this is, this is like the ultimate end of the, of the story, so to get to be here, to see them go back to the wild is a real privilege. Releasing wild animals can be unpredictable. Arriving as tiny fledglings, this is their final test to see if they're ready. And they take flight, ready to start the next chapter. There are not many people who get to do what we do, um, getting this up close and personal to wildlife and seeing the whole story through, especially with young animals like we've released tonight, to see them from tiny and helpless to being able to go off and fend for themselves and hopefully live long lives. And tomorrow, join us as we meet the founder of Vale, Caroline, and as we explore the brooder room where more passionate caregivers like Shannon and Allison help look after the babies and the most vulnerable of Britain's wildlife. With spring and summer comes the baby boom. This is the brooder room, the intensive care ward of Vale Hospital. Every animal here needs 24-hour, hands-on attention. Shannon, an experienced wildlife carer, is leading today's patient care. 
it can be pretty hectic at times because everything is on a feeding schedule. So you've got baby birds that are fed from every 30 minutes. While that's going on, you've got your hedgehogs are being fed from every two hours. As well as that, you've got patients coming in, patients leaving. This array of hedgehogs is being reared by Shannon herself after being orphaned. So it is so rewarding to see them grow and they are just all so sweet. <laughs> the story of these orphans is a common theme at the center which saw almost 7,000 animals pass through their doors last year. If you do get attached to everything, um, you're probably not in the right job, because um, you should want to be able to release everything. That is the main aim. See you coming in round the back. This three-day-old deer was just orphaned so it was brought into the center to give it a fighting chance for survival. The next several days are going to be key to stabilize and ensure that it safely That's begins its journey. And there's no better person than Vale founder Caroline. Going back to 1984, we got our house on the market and back in those days, it was valued at £75,000 and somebody offered us 49000 for it and we accepted because we wanted to get onto this piece of land. I think I'm, I'm the sort of person who, when it's happening, I get on with it. It's only afterwards I go to pieces and think, what on earth have I done? The most satisfactory part of what we do, the, the part that you get the most satisfaction from, is that release moment and it's an amazing feeling. Fortunately, these badgers, their time is coming to an end. However, as is typical of wildlife, nothing is straightforward. Releasing some animals is not as simple as you'd think. It's not like with badgers, you can just open the door and there you go. There are a lot of social and environmental factors to think about. So today, we're gonna to find out how we can do this. Today I'm with Steve of the Warwickshire Badger Group to find a suitable release site for this orphan family. Steve's an expert in finding suitable, unused underground networks or badger sets, which can be tricky to locate. After a while, at last, we see something. Over here, there's a, there's a hole. Look at this bedding right here. So we're calling this a bedding ball. Badgers are really fastidious creatures. Down here, there'll be about 10 times this amount in their den, in their chamber. And they'll bring this up, especially on a sunny day like today, to air it out. And if you smell it, like Steve showed me, it actually smells nice and clean. And if you can come up here really, really close, there are these five parallel marks from the five claws of the badger as he, was, he or she was sort of trying to scurry out of this hole right here. This is just this really telltale badger territory. This is fascinating. Although this is an exciting discovery that badgers are in the area, we are going to need to continue the search. I mean, there's all the classic signs here, the, the smoothness, the size of the hole, bits of bedding. After trekking around the forest, we found four different sets, all occupied. We're now running out of time as the day comes to an end, but there's one more on the map for the day. Down in the tunnel, there's no sign of that being shifted at all up or There's no smooth sides, it's just a hole that clearly hasn't been used. At last, under the canopy of these woods in Warwickshire, this find, this Martian looking landscape, will be the new home of the orphan badgers. Tomorrow, will our orphan badgers take to their new home? I think I'm carrying all the badgers. And we go looking for a new family for our baby deer. I think they're found deer. This is perfect. Britain's wide open spaces have been home to some of its most iconic species for thousands of years. Because of human activity, some of these animals end up at places like Vale. Holly, a three day old fallow deer, came in yesterday. But in a few months, she'll be old enough to leave the center. So we've been tasked with finding her a new family for when that day comes. This is grassland. Fallow deer are grazers. That little baby girl back there is a fallow deer. Not all deer are social, but these deer are. 
and we need to find her a family for when she's ready to go back to the wild in just a couple months' time. Being a prey animal, they have very keen senses and can sense you from miles away if the wind is right. Stay low, come on. Just over there. After hours of waiting, we see movement in the far distance. I want to keep really low. I think I've been spotted, so I don't want to stick out. But they're right. They're right over there. This is the time of year when the deer tend to be more secretive and harder to find. For Holly, this place, this herd, will be her new family come autumn. Animals of all shapes and sizes, feathered and furry, come in and out of the hospital. But they all have one thing in common, and that is to go back to where they belong. Today, we need to get this group of young orphan badgers to the new home that we found for them. But some animals can be notoriously difficult to handle. It's important to me that these badgers should be given a second chance. If we as a human race have got the opportunity to help an animal and give it a second chance, then that's very, very important. Badgers are well known for their powerful claws and teeth, speed and ferocity when cornered. A little bit of OHS here. Um, we're trapped in an enclosed space. It's dark with some badgers we're about to let out. So, Peter, if um, things go, you know, a bit of mayhem, know your exits. You you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hold on, hold on, Dean. Bit of badger riot control here. <laughs> okay. We've got two in. We need one more. So, three per cage. Oh, okay. okay. And finally, we're on our way. One, two, three, lift. Okay. Yep. I think I'm carrying all the badgers. Th this left side. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Right. Whew. Giving it a little bit of a tidy so it's a nice place for them to to be welcomed home into. And then we're gonna put some of their old bedding for where they came from, the, s the smell of home for them, into these holes. All right, two more to go. Two. <laughs> there she goes. Freedom. Just simply giving these animals another go in the wild um, is very rewarding. Uh, it gives you a sense of actually achieving something, but it's, it's a pleasure to see their little backsides disappear down the holes. It really is. Go down the hole. Come on guys, that's the way home. We've given them another chance and it really does make you feel uh, happy that you can do something like that for wildlife. Well this is what it's all about. After all those weeks and months and hours and hours and hours of everybody pitching in to help these animals, finally they're back here where they belong in the wild. This is what it's all about. Within this week, we saw a snapshot of what happens behind the scenes when wildlife is in need. As summer comes to an end, the circle of life here carries on, and places like Vale Wildlife Hospital continue to be there for Britain's wild animals.